Welcome to Behind the Raw, and this week I'm going to be talking through an image I took at the stunning hidden beach on Valencia Island. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to another episode of my series Behind the Raw. And this week, I'm going to go through an image that I took on the final destination that I had on the stunning Valencia Island. And a bit of a backstory in relation to it is that I traveled this road many, many times before, and I never, ever went down the small path towards this cove. I'd seen some trees along the way. I went, mm, okay, they could be interesting. And what it turns out is as I turned each corner is that this cove is like a subtropical paradise. There are different types of trees down there, but more importantly, there's a stunning cove. And when I arrived, the conditions were bad, but great at the same time because there was a big mist after coming through. So I went down, took a couple of shots, took me a long time to get to the area that I originally wanted to go to, which was the left hand side of the beach. Because when I first went there, I went, wow, this looks like Vancouver Island. And it reminded me of videos that I'd seen from Adam Gibbs who record along the coast there. So that's what struck me straight away. So I was excited to get the camera over and framed up. And the shot I'm going to take you through here now is towards the end of the day, not only did I have a stunning area to take some photographs of, the light broke and then I started to track the waves. So yeah, we're going to jump onto the computer here. I'm going to take you through a sample image from that shoot and I'm going to give you my, as usual my thoughts, my editing process, my workflow, and we'll see how we go. Right, so I've got the image here now, as you can see, it's one of the stunning uh, locations that I had at the very left-hand side of the beach. And what I love in relation to this image is looking at the raw file here, is you have this island that's there, you've got this mist that was coming in over the top of the headland, you've got a bare glimpse of Valencia Lighthouse, which sits up the top here. But what really struck me was number one, the, the trees that are here. And then number two, as I said in the outset, I started watching the waves and these waves started to come in and I managed to capture a shot here, which I really, really like, which is this curvature in the uh, wave this solitary bit of white within the image. Now, I think the key thing when I start looking at this image here, and I'll give you an idea, like I did in the previous episodes, is just to show you what the auto can do. If you're ever in a pinch, it will give you a steer to be able to start off from. But with the raw file, as you'll probably know, it is a flat image. But what auto will do, and we'll click it here, is that it will actually just add a bit of tonality to the image. So already we can start to see, if we look at the differences here, is that's the raw. And then if we look again at the uh, auto, sorry, that's the uh, auto and then that's the original. So straight away you can see that it's starting to bring in some of the details in relation to that. Now I think the key thing when I start looking at these images here is what I want to try and do is bring out not only the texture but also the colour that was there. And there was a lovely yellow glow in the sky here and it's not prevalent in regards to this raw file. And plus I want to bring out more of the aqua colours in relation to this. So the first thing I'll do as pretty much always anyway here is I'm going to reset the image so it starts again from the scratch and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to change my crop and also straighten my horizon. Now there's a couple of ways you can straighten your horizon. You can go here and you can you know, twist it like this. You can see that I'm looking at the water area here as opposed to the headland. And that's an important thing as well because if the headland could be coming towards you, which is going to change the perspective. So having a natural um, horizon line, which is the water here, is the best option. Like if I, for argument's sake, bring that back here, you might look and go, well, that's not, that's straight here, Darren. It is possibly, but it's not here, which is the actual horizon. So you can do it, like I said, by twisting it like this, or you can take this here, which is your automatic per se, or tool. So you click it here and you draw a line across on your horizon, not what you think it is, but follow it along the horizon here and boom, it straightens the horizon for you. Or you can, uh, again, let's reset that. You can also go in and click on auto. Uh, it will do it there as well because it has something that it can uh, find to be a straight line, but it doesn't always happen. So I wouldn't be overly reliant in relation to that. That's the first thing I'll do. The second thing is I'll say, okay, what do I want my eye to be drawn to? Now, when I look at the bottom of the screen here, this, in my opinion, doesn't add much to the image. And I think it can be a lot stronger if we change this to a 16.9. Now, 16.9, again, you know, you take this here, you can have it like this, but I'm cutting off the top of the tree. So for me, I want to have it that I can 
keep in the tree that's here. I don't want this darkness that's there in the corner. I want to probably, you know, see if I can get as much out of this image as possible. So I'm at now all of the edges that are there, which is fine. I can do is create a bit of breathing room and then I should be able to gain a very small bit like this right now. And then I can take that so I'm not cutting anything off on the top. And already when I start looking at that image here, it's much better, it's more visually uh, appealing. So for me, that's the first thing I'll do is change my crop. Second thing is, okay, is I will look and I look at my brightest parts within the image. Now I click on here, which shows me where the highlights will be. So if I overexpose the image here, you can see visualizing where they are at the top up here. This also changes there. And your histogram will tell you if the image is exposed properly or not. But well, to bring that back here, I can see that the histogram is telling me that there's a lot of white area, which there is, which is the sky. So I want to be careful in relation to that. So I'll take my highlights and I'm going to bring my highlights up and I'm going to go to the point where I say, okay, it's not going to blow. And I still have a lot of room that I can move on here. As you can see, it's very much so to the right hand side, but it's nothing is overexposed. Second is I can take my shadows. Now I can bring my shadows down or I can bring my shadows up. I prefer to bring my shadows up because the detail is going to be there within the raw. And if I bring up my shadows straight away, you can start to see all of this detail here in these trees and these rocks being revealed. Now, granted, it was the end of January when I was here so there wasn't much foliage on the trees but I can imagine what this is going to look like in the autumn time it's going to be incredible so I won't bring my shadows all the way up here but I'll bring them up just enough in relation to that and then from my whites point of view so I've got my whites that are here my whites that are here and then obviously white within the sky I don't think there's much that I need to do and also if I bring it to the right I end up dealing with these highlights that are here as it is. So just a small bit of a touch in relation to that. It's still telling me that I'm close here so this blue line tells me that it's uh, this blue box tells me it's more or less at its limits and then I can say okay let me know inf influence on the blacks and the blacks I've got a bit of room on here because if I look at the histogram I'm not touching on the left hand side now if I bring that all the way over here the first area that's going to go dark and going to highlight blue up here is these trees and I know that because it's a darker area so you can see here they're starting to go dark which means that that is blacker than black so that's underexposed that shows you visually on the screen it also shows you on the histogram up here too. Now, by the way, you can also catch your histogram instead of having to drag these sliders, you can catch the histogram and you can actually drag the histogram here. So if you wanted to say, okay, I want to affect the shadows, I can just bring it to this point. Now looking, there's only one small bit of black right here, which is fine. And the same here, I can take my highlights and I can just drag my highlights down. If I want to be able to influence in the center of the image, I can do that as well by changing the midtones. So the, the the histogram is very, very useful here on Lightroom because you've got a lot more flexibility that you can utilize on. So for me, looking at that here, I say, okay, that's a basic, but what I want to try and do now is bring out some of the texture and a bit of a punch to the image. Now, contrast is something which is your contrast between lights and darks. Now, if I take the contrast slider here and I move it to the right, what you notice on the histogram is that this is start creating a bigger gap between the two. So it spreads the histogram out further and it doesn't really work for me because what it does is it crunches up all of these here. So I can take my histogram and I can just say, okay, I want to bring that slightly down. If I bring it down, look what happens in the histogram is it's bringing more of the information in towards the center. So I say, okay, I don't even need to do much, probably a slight adjustment here just to be able to have a bit more uh, to play with within the histogram and then on vibrance and I think this is where the image is going to start to really come to life so if I start to look at my vibrance let's for argument's sake whack it up here for a moment you can start to see these colors that are coming through here on the aqua and you can just start to see the yellows that are coming here as well on the islands that's at 74 I think that's a bit much I can look at this on a different level as well uh, in a moment. So take my vibrance, so let's say plus 48. Saturation, again, you look at the blues coming out here as I bring up my saturation. For me, that's oversaturated, so I will bring that down. I'm probably gonna give it a good bit of saturation because I wanna bring out that color. So I'll probably take that to, yeah, there, thereabouts. I like the aqua color that's coming through here, and I also like the yellows that are there also. And then the next thing that I want to do is to check my white balance. So my white balance, I can go in and say, okay, it's shot. Um, in the camera. So I leave it on auto on the camera because I'm shooting on raw. I can change that later. But if I click on auto here, 
watch what happens to the image is that it gives it a more of a yellow tone which is like i said was there in the first instance anyway it also brings out the aqua in the water so for me from a coloring point of view i think you know we're getting there we're getting better you can start to see some of the detail coming out here but where it's really going to start to lift is when i start to focus and deal with the sky now before i even do that again i'll play my usual trick of finding any dust spots that are there again you know there are none visible looking at the image here but if i bring in my dehaze and i whack that up to 100 percent immediately you can see there's a few water spots and dust spots that are there so again just taking my heel tool you can make that bigger or smaller by using your bracket keys on your keyboard or you can actually use your if you're using an apple mouse you can scroll with your finger but for me it's going to make that only the size that i need it to be click on this and then the next one is click on this. There's one here right next to that. There's another one over here. I'm going to make this slightly bigger. And then this is probably a bird which is moving along here. I'm going to grab that. But when I whack that up, up oh, there's one more up here as well. Okay. So when I whack up the dehaze, it gives me that visibility that I need to be able to find those dust spots. Taking dehaze back down again and taking this back off there is no difference in relation to the sky because you wouldn't have seen them. But they will become prevalent when I start to add a small bit of dehaze into the image. And if I add a small, tiny bit of dehaze here, and again, similar to what I said in my previous episodes, it makes probably counterintuitive. You know, there's a mist that's there naturally. Why would I want to remove it? Well, I'm not removing it. I want to affect it. And what I want to do is I want to affect it in this sky area up here. So I'm going to give that a 25 on a dehaze, and I'll say, okay. Now, for me, looking at this image here, it looks too colorful but also it's not balanced i really want to be able to see what i can do in regards to the sky now you can use a graduated filter when you're shooting in the field or you can just use a standard filter my settings of this were 0.4 seconds i was lf16 iso 50 so i think probably for this here I had my three stop routes, just my polarizer on as well, um, just to be able to get that relatively quick enough uh, shutter speed. So what I want to do here is I want to look at the sky. So on uh, Lightroom, you can go in here, you can click on this, and with these new tools that they have, let's try the first one, which is the sky. So what that's going to do is it's going to look for everything that it, it thinks is in the sky. And if I change that here, you can see, look at all the detail that's in the clouds that are up there that I want to be able to get out of this image. But the problem is, is that it thinks that it's going to uh, use these cliffs as well. So it's also affecting those. So I don't think I want to uh, do that um, approach. What I do want to do is take a linear gradient. I'll start on the outside up here. I'll hold on my shift key to make sure I keep it straight. And I'm going to make sure then that it's nice and soft. I'm going to drag this down. So the center point here, and you can kind of see the gradation that's happening. And I can drag that down uh, to, let's just say here. And then what I can do is I can say, okay, how do I want to affect this area at the top? If I bring down my exposure, I start to see a bit more of the detail. If I say, to, okay, I want to bring out my blacks a bit more, I'm now affecting the tree that's over here. I don't want to do that. Even with my exposure as well, I'm affecting those trees. So I'm going to bring that up slightly. But what I am going to do is I'm going to apply dehaze and I'm going to apply it to this area within the sky. And if I bring this up here, you start to see all of those details here coming through. And you can see that there's a big brightness of color in relation to this. And that's because I would have whacked up my vibrance and my exposure earlier on. I can adjust those now in a moment. Now within this as well, you can go in and click on here because you notice that it's affecting the, the trees here. So I can say, okay, intersect this mask, which is this mask I've done here, intersect that with a radial gradient. And now I can draw a gradient over here which is a radial gradient. And now I can take that and make that adjustments as well separately in relation to that, which would affect both. But I don't need to uh, do that right now um, because I'm going to make the changes in relation to the sky and that's going to affect uh, the overall aspect in relation to the image as well. So that's the first thing I will do. The second thing is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add another um, radial gradient and I'm going to take that for this wave because what I want to try and do here is I want to bring out the detail within that wave. So I'm creating this, making it the shape that I want it to be and the size that I want it to be. Key point as well is don't have it if you notice here this is the strongest and it's going to get weaker from the feathering. Don't have it that this is going to be visible um, or not visible on the edges because if I make this change for argument's sake and I bring down my exposure just to show you literally okay that's going to affect everything outside of that if I click in this uh, radial gradient as well 
and I click on invert. Now what that's doing is it's saying, okay, I'm only going to affect everything within this. So if I now bring down my exposure, the whole image is going dark around that, whereas here is staying the same. So it's affecting on the opposite end of that. I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to affect only within this here. So I'm going to bring that to my standard, let's just say exposure. But what I am going to do is I'm going to bring up my white specifically in relation to this area. I'm going to bring up my highlights within that area as well. And I'm going to give it a small bit more exposure. And what that's going to do is only affect that wave. But like I said a moment ago here, I don't want to run the risk of having it not fully done. So if I look here on the left hand side, I don't necessarily need it there. So I can drag this over and then I can make this a bit bigger and make it a small bit taller. So now it's affecting everything within the wave. And then I can just give it a small bit of a turn so that it's more in the shape that it needs to be of the wave because it was slightly off at an angle and then I can make it smaller here. So now straight away when I look at this and I see what I'm doing is all I'm doing effectively is influencing this area. And I want to brighten that up because that for me is the star of the show within this image. So now when I look at this image here, I can see that number one, it's too colorful. But what I have done is I've brought in more of the texture of those clouds and it's made these areas here darker. So final step that I want to do on that is come back into the image and say, OK, now I want to bring my um, vibrance and my saturation back down because I think they were too bright. I can give it a small bit more color here on that. I can take my shadows. And if I wanted to, uh, I can just take this brush here again um, and I can add a new, I can go into a brush, okay? And I can say, okay, I want to bring up my shadows of those trees because they have been affected. So I can bring this this way, take my exposure slightly up like this. And now I can brush in the detail here and make this brighter because I want to keep the detail within those trees. Um, you don't necessarily have to do that, but for me, I want to do it because I want to try and keep some of the detail uh, within the trees that are here overall. You can make this extremely bright if need be, and that's now going to remove the darkness within that. I'm happy to have some bit of dark because there was black within the trees. So now when I go back to my image, a uh, good tool actually as well as there's a lot that's going on here on your keyboard. If you press L, it creates a light box around your image so you can see what the image would look like. And if you press L uh, again, it then completely darkens out the area and then press L and it goes back in or over. So now for me to look at this image here, I want to turn this off for a moment because that's a slight bit distracting. Um, I want to be able to see what does the image look like? What have I done? So if I zoom in here, there's my water. I've affected the color in relation to that. Here is the mist. I've got a little bit more color on the island. There's the color that's in the sky. Like I said earlier on, you can just make out the lighthouse that's there. And these trees for me, they're, they're lovely, but I don't necessarily have to have them that bright because it's bringing you up within the overall image. Now looking at my histogram here, it's telling me that my blacks are a bit too dark. So I can just drag this over here. And now that's bringing up the detail in those trees. And as you can see, then overall, I think I've got a very pleasing uh, image. I might just give it a slight bit of a brightener just to give it a bit more detail in relation to that. Now that's going to affect everything, even though I've done the, uh, the sky. But when I look at this image here, and again, I'll just press maybe uh, F to go uh, full screen in relation to that. That's what the overall uh, image will be like. I like this image. I think I used it actually for the thumbnail for this video and the thumbnail for the actual episode as well. I can't wait to go back here actually if I get some nice conditions with some nice light lighting up this whole entire area. It's a phenomenal spot to go explore. And then the final thing that I'm going to do, like always, is to go into my detail and click on denoise and that's going to go in and look and see is there any noise that needs to be removed i know there will be uh, on the headland area and if i look over here at the just by the lighthouse for argument's sake it's going to bring in a bit more detail as you can see without width uh, but definitely it's going to affect over here so you can see there's quite a lot of noise in the sky area now it's gone back it's gone. So yeah, I'm going to uh, click on that as well. That's going to go off and that's going to do its magic. So thank you very much as always for joining this episode of Behind the Raw. I hope you enjoyed seeing my work process and my thoughts in relation to the image. And maybe you would have learned a couple of things that you haven't used in Lightroom before. Be sure to tune in to my next episode on this coming Sunday. I'm really excited to share some great adventures, starting with a location that I visited many, many times, but there's been a change. 
and now you can't get to the areas to take some photographs. That's this episode here that will be out on Sunday and I hope I'm lucky enough for you to come along and join me. So thank you as always. If it's your first time on the channel, please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment and until the next time, schlange fall. Thank you.